Now your calculator's keyboard is divided into three different areas and that very top area, the area up here, is your navigation. I want you to think of the middle like your mouse. You can click forward, click backwards, up and down, but you can also use that as a touchpad. I don't know if you can see here on my calculator. As I move my finger around the touchpad, I am moving my mouse around the screen. That middle button is your click and it allows you to choose something. Let me go back to that home screen. The middle section of keys is very much like any scientific calculator. You've got your numbers in the middle, operators over here on the right hand side and then some additional operators over here on the left we're going to explore those and practice with them when we get to the calculator scratch pad and then along the bottom we've got our alphabetic keyboard um, this is a little bit cumbersome because it's not a traditional keyboard layout but it is a way that you can access all of the letters and you'll notice at the bottom here are our typical variable keys the X the Y and the Z onto that home screen. First, you've got some options under the scratch pad. Think of the scratch pad as a regular graphing calculator. It allows you to do calculations on the calculate screen or to do some graphs on the graph screen, but it doesn't organize them or save them in any particular way. On the right side are the documents. You can create documents that include several different apps. You might have some calculations along with some notes, along with a graph that all describes a particular example or topic. Topic. And then down below are the calculator's apps. And those are the calculator, we've got the graphing tool, our geometry tool, spreadsheets where you can save and work with data, our data and statistics tool, and notes. You might also have an additional green button with a beaker on it. That's for the Vernier interface that allows you to collect data, say in a science class or something like that. Let's get right into doing some calculations. We wanna go to the scratch pad calculator. To get there, I can navigate using my mouse by using the touchpad. I can also use the tab button over here to tab through my available options options, or I can probably the most easily, I can just type the letter or number next to the one that I want. I want calculate, so I'm going to look for the letter A and just click on A. Now I am in the calculator scratch pad. Up in navigation, we also have the scratch pad button. This is a nice quick way to get to the scratch pad from wherever you're at. If I click on the scratch pad key, it also moves me from the graph back to the calculator. Now let's go ahead and just do some basic calculations. We can do something like six divided by nine and then hit enter. Notice it gives me that reduced fraction of two thirds as an exact value. But if you instead wanted the approximate value, instead of hitting the enter key, we're gonna use those two squiggles, which is approximate. So just from right here, it's gonna remember that two thirds was my last answer. I'm gonna hit control followed by enter, and it gives me instead that decimal approximation. We can also do a fraction template. So this key right here next to the number nine is the template key. This is super, super useful. It allows you to put something in fraction form, exponential form, radical form. Let's go ahead and choose absolute value for this next one. So I'm gonna choose the absolute value and then hit enter. And let's put in here a negative and I'm gonna use the little negative next to the number three. So the little negative, and then I'll just say negative eight and then enter and it returns that eight. We can also grab some of these operators from the left-hand side of the screen. Say we wanna do a square root. Now the square root is above the X squared key next to four. It's in blue, so I'm gonna do control followed by square root. Let's say that I wanted to do the square root of a negative number. I'm gonna use again that negative right below number three, and I'm gonna do the square root of negative four followed by enter. Now it says error non-real calculation calculation, we're going to change the calculator settings here in just a minute so that it gives me instead the complex form of that answer, which would be 2i. 
We can also do some trig calculations. We've got this trig menu over here next to number seven. If I hit that trig menu and then do cosine, and I ask it for say the cosine of 180 and then hit enter, it gives me this number that I wasn't expecting. 180 is halfway around the unit circle. I was expecting a cosine value of negative one. But if you take a look at the upper corner, it says that we are in RAD or radians. Now I can just navigate up here by using my touchpad and then clicking on the center touchpad, I can change that from radian to degree. So if I change that to degree, and then I'm gonna re-enter that again, cosine of 180. Notice this time I just typed in the letter COS instead of using that quick menu then hit enter, we get that value that we expected of negative one. Let's go find those settings in the calculator, including that complex form. To go to the settings, there's two different ways that you can do this. You can hit document right from where we are, or I think this is a little simpler to remember, just go back to your home screen. So I'm gonna click on the on button to go back to my home screen. And you'll notice that settings is over here at number five. I'm just gonna type the number five because I think it's easier than navigating around. So I choose number five for the settings. And I want the document settings. Again, I find it easier just to type in either the letter or the number next to the option that I want. So I want document settings, so I choose number two. Now, once I'm in document settings, I can use my tab key to navigate through. I've got the display digits, which is typically set with a float, maybe three, four, five, or six. I like float six. There are also some fixed options. For example, fix two would have it always round to the second decimal place, fix three to the third decimal place. So we want float and float six works great. We can change several different things here, but I really wanna change the real or complex. I'm gonna tab down, so I'm tabbing down to the real or complex. Notice that I've got that arrow, that means I've got some additional options. I'm gonna choose that right arrow from my navigation pad up on top. Choosing that right arrow, I've got my options of real, that's what we were in, it said it's a non-real solution. We want rectangular instead. Rectangular is gonna give me that complex form. I've chosen what I want, so I can click on the middle of my navigation pad to select that. I can continue to tap down and you can change several more of these format settings if you want. I'm just gonna click OK. Let's return to the scratch pad. Instead of hitting A, I'm just gonna hit my scratch pad key up here in my navigation section. So hitting my scratch pad key, I wanna choose the square root of negative four again. I could type it in or I can arrow up through my previous choices. Up at my navigation pad, let's click the up arrow and move through those navigation choices and I'm highlighting the square root of negative four, hit enter to select it, and then enter again to do that calculation, and sure enough, it gives me two i. Next, let's input a graph. I am in the scratch pad. I really wanna be on the second tab right here. The easiest way to get there is just to click your scratch pad button again, and I'm on that second tab. Now mine says f1 of x equals. I can go ahead and type in a function. Say that we wanted x squared. So I'm gonna type x from the bottom, and then I'm gonna choose that squared key, which is next to number four. So I've got x squared, and then I wanna enter to get the graph there. Now there's several different things that you can do with this graph. Maybe you wanna zoom in or zoom out, or analyze the graph. To get to the menu that goes along with your graph, hit the menu button towards the top. The menu gives you all different sorts of options, including some view options, window and zoom options, and more. Now I don't wanna be in this menu. I'm gonna hit escape. Instead, I wanna show you, let me hit escape one more time. Instead, I wanna 
gonna show you how to navigate this without going into the menu. If you move your finger around the keypad, you can move your mouse around the graphing screen. I want you to hover right over one of the axes until you get that label that says axes. You'll also notice that your cursor changed to this rounded hand. This is the grab feature. Next, you wanna click and hold on that center key in your navigation pad or your touch pad. And once you've clicked and hold, you can drag this in and out, moving your finger around the touchpad. So you're gonna click and hold that briefly, let go, and then move it. It's a really nice way to quickly zoom in and zoom out. To get an abbreviated menu with just the most common functions, you can hit control followed by menu. This will work wherever you're at in your calculator. Let's add a second graph. So I've got my F1 here and I don't have the equation box anymore. To get back to the equation box, you wanna hit the tab button. So hitting the tab button, and then I can hit the up arrow to see that F1. Notice that it's been checked because it's selected. I can also uncheck it, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave it up there. And I wanna arrow down to get to F2. This time I wanna put in the cosine. So I wanna do a cosine. Let's grab that from the trig menu. I'm gonna choose cosine and I want cosine of my variable X and then enter. Now I'm in degrees, so I end up with this pretty funky looking graph when I was really expecting a cosine wave, but I can quickly change that using my touchpad and navigating over to degrees and then clicking that middle button and changing it to radians. And now I've got that cosine wave that we were expecting. Let's go back to the home page by clicking our on button and explore some documents. The Inspire can do a lot of things, but its real power is in the ability to create and save documents with multiple pages. Let's go ahead and create a new document. I'm gonna hit the number one. It's asking me what kind of a page I wanna add. We've got those apps that we saw at the bottom of the home screen with a couple of additional ones. I wanna add a notes page, and I'm gonna add a notes page that has the formula for the area of a circle. Let's go ahead and type in area of a circle first. I'm I'm gonna use the caps or the shift key right there above seven. I'm just gonna capitalize the A and then type that in. Using this underline key for space. I'm gonna hit enter twice, so I've got some room on my page. You can type some additional text here, but I'm gonna put in the area of the circle, A equals pi R squared. Starting with a capital A, so shift followed by A. I want the equals symbol, which is over here next to the number seven, right next to trig, so equals and then pi r squared. To get to pi, I could use the symbol menu here. If I go control and then hit this button, I've got all of the symbols in the calculator. Let me escape there, hitting that escape button, but I want the quick symbol menu, which is right next to H. This has the most common math symbols. And sure enough, pi is the very first choice. We hit enter, and then I want r squared. So I want an exponent template. You'll find it in your template key, but you can also use this caret key to quickly get to the exponent template. Super nice. I want R as the base, so R, and then I'll right arrow using my navigation keys up on top, and then a two, and then I'm gonna right arrow twice to get out of the exponent template, and then you can hit enter, you can enter some more things here. I'm gonna leave it there. Let's add another page, this time a graph. I'm gonna hit control followed by that document plus page button. It asks me what I want. I wanna add a graph, which is number two. So I'm gonna click two. Right now it's prompting me for a function, but a circle is not a function. To get some additional options, I'm gonna choose menu and I want three, the graph entry edit, so I can change the format there. So I click three. And then it says, what type do you want? I'm gonna do a template. So let's type three again for an equation template. 
And there's my circle. I'm gonna type three for circle. And I do want that um, form that they're giving me there in blue. So I'll hit enter and I can go ahead and just fill in the different spots. So let's say I'm gonna center that at two one. And then I'm just going to um, space through here using my arrow button. So I went two one and then again, space through and let's have a radius, oops, went too far. Let's have a radius of three. So I'll put a three there and then um, enter. And there is my circle. To move back and forth between your pages, you're gonna use the blue navigation keys in your touchpad. So you'll go control left or control right to get to another one of your pages. Once you're ready with all of your pages, you can go ahead and save your document. To do that, you can click on the X in the upper right hand corner. You can do control followed by S or you can use your document menu. If I click on that document menu, I'm gonna choose the file option, so number one, and then choose that save option, which is number four. Oh my gosh, you just learned so much. Please let me know how it's going and what else you'd like to learn. Watch this one next.